from the WLHS studios in Lodi, Wisconsin. This is Impact News. With the WLHS News team, reporter John Gressens III and Ashlyn Moody. Hitting you with the truth, this is Impact News. And now, here's Ashlyn Moody. Hello, and welcome to WLHS Channel 12 Impact News, where we are hitting you with the truth. I'm Ashlyn Moody. And I'm John Gresson. And I'll be covering Mr. Hoffman's retirement and the extended school year. And I'll be covering the new parking permits and the off-campus lunches. Now to Ashlyn with Mr. Hosmer's retirement. There were two Bullets, Mr. and Mrs. Bullet. And they were in love and married. And they were in love and they decided to get married. They were very happy and married, so they decided to have a little baby. Ever since 1978, when Mr. Hosmer first joined the Lodi High School community, he has been telling jokes and making everybody's day better. After 30 years of commitment to LHS guidance, Mr. Hosman is retiring his Jolly Ranchers and quick-witted jokes. I'll miss his wonderful sense of humor and his laid-back attitude towards the students, says senior Morgan McKern. He's very relatable and extremely helpful. According to Mrs. Love, no one has been hired to fill the position. We haven't found anybody yet, but there are nearly 60 applicants for the position. According to Love, it will be hard to find a replacement for somebody that is so connected to the students. Mr. Hosman has brought many amazing things to Lodi High School in hopes of getting kids involved, and it's worked. Not only did he start Eagle's Nest, which used to be known as Upham Woods, but he's also gearheaded a few school groups such as SAD and Big Buddy. According to Love, after Hosman leaves, the groups such as SAD, Big Buddy, and Eagle's Nest will continue. Others will take over the groups and continue involvement of the kids in the community service projects. According to Mr. Hosman, there are many reasons that he has decided to retire this year. I've been doing this for a long time and I enjoy it, but I'm at a point in my life when I need to expand my horizons. Hosman also said that he would like to spend time with his third grandchild and do more volunteer work than he has been able to do here. When asked about what he will miss most about LHS, Hosman had no hesitations when he said, the kids. I like working with young people. They have more passion, more creative thought, and they're more open to new and different ideas. According to Love, the thing that she will miss most about Mr. Hosman is having him as a soundboard for her crazy ideas. He knows the community, staff, and students more than most. Although we will all miss his sense of humor and his understanding and relatable attitude, I'm sure we are all grateful for his many years of accomplishment at Lodi High School. And now to John for a story about parking permits. Thanks, Ash, and I'm sure everyone here will miss it. This year, a big change happened at Lodi High School. That change is to have to, have to pay for parking in the parking lot. Students now have numbered tags hanging from their rearview mirrors signifying that they have paid their $15 fee for the permit. The school also started to write tickets for illegally parked cars and reckless driving. I talked to a few sources to find out how people feel about the new change and why the administrators decided to start this new rule. The school started, or started charging students $15 a semester at the beginning of the second semester this year. Justina Jones, a student at Lodi High School, said that she doesn't think students should have to pay for parking because it's some kids' only way to school and that some families may not be able to afford it. I asked Ms. Love how they decided how much they were going to charge students for parking and she told me that they assessed other schools and the prices range anywhere from $40 to $150 a year at larger schools. So they th thought $15 a semester would be reasonable. Since they started this, students have been parking and driving more responsibly, Associate Principal Ms. Amidon said in my interview. Justina Jones, on the other hand, said that she has not seen any improvement in the driving of her fellow students. If students did not park correctly, they would receive a ticket for $10. If they didn't have a permit at all, they got a fine of $5. Repeat offenders could possibly lose their parking privileges. The new change was because of two reasons Ms. Love listed. One, to get students to generally register their vehicles, and two, because they were having a lot of issues with kids driving and parking irresponsibly. 
The permits also help identify vehicles when something happens in the parking lot. Ms. Amidon told me that since the beginning of the permits, there have been about 30 or less tickets handed out. The majority of the tickets were for not having the permit at all, and most of the tickets were at the beginning, and now there are very few tickets being handed out at all. When I asked where all the money was going to, going that the students had paid, Ms. Love said that it was going into the district fund. They were going to try and use it to get upgraded security cameras in both front parking lots and the auditorium parking lot. The new cameras would help identify cars better and make sure that parking, the parking lot is safe. And in case you're wondering, Ms. Love said that the school board doesn't plan on charge, changing the price of, the, of parking for years to come. Now back to Ashlyn, who will be reporting on how the school year has been extended. Thank you, John.